The earliest use of glue can be attributed to the Neanderthals, who made it from animal parts. Although the raw materials used today are not much different from the past, the process has become much more streamlined to cater to global demand. It's estimated that the average American uses 18.2 kilograms of glue per year. So how did they do it? Animal glue is primarily made from collagen, a protein found in the connective tissues and bones of animals. The most common source is animal hides, such as cattle or horses. But bones, tendons, and other parts can also be used. These raw materials can be obtained from a variety of sources, such as farms, tanneries, and meatpacking companies. It is no coincidence that the world's largest glue manufacturer is the dairy company, Borden Company. For fish glue, the raw materials include the bones, scales, heads, and skins of fish. These are obtained from canneries and other processing plants. Although the raw materials for animal and fish glue are different, the process for making both types of glue remains largely the same only with minor variations between the two. Once the raw materials are procured by the factories, they are prepared for the process ahead. The hides and other animal remains are washed so that dirt or other impurities can be removed. They are then submerged in water to soften the material. This softened animal material is called stock, and it is passed through a series of water baths in which more and more lime is added to make the hides and skin swell and break them down into collagen. The swollen hides are then rinsed in a large washing machine to remove the lime. However, trace quantities of lime still remain. The last traces of lime are eliminated by treating the stock with weak acids like acidic or hydrochloric acid. This process is called neutralization and was discovered by chemists in the 19th century. Once the lime has been completely removed, the stock is cooked either by boiling it in open tanks or cooking it under pressure in autoclaves. Cooking at the correct temperature and for the right length of time breaks down the collagen and converts it into gelatin or glue. If the temperature or timing is off, the quality of the glue will be ruined. Large steam coils in the open tanks heat the water and product to 160 degrees Fahrenheit, 70 degrees Celsius. Three or four treatments with clean water are performed at increasing temperatures. The resulting liquid, called glue liquor, is extracted and reheated again to thicken the glue. When cooled, the glue resembles a jelly-like substance, but still has a lot of impurities that need to be removed, either chemically or mechanically. For the chemical removal of impurities, alum or acid followed by egg albumin may be added. The subsequent reaction causes the impurities to precipitate out of the glue, leaving pure glue behind. Once the impurities have been removed from the glue liquor, it can be used to make a variety of adhesives. Sulfurous acid, phosphoric acid, or alum may be added to make brown, clear, or white glue. For white school glue, zinc oxide is added to the glue liquor. At this point, the glue is a weak, runny liquid. Its concentration is increased by placing it in vacuum evaporators and drying via several methods. The glue can be chilled into either sheets or blocks and then suspended on nets to dry and become even more concentrated. After that, these are poured into different tubes, containers, and sticks for commercial use. Rather than perform a quality check at the end, glue manufacturers carefully monitor each bit of the process. This is because the temperature and pressure required to make glue must be very precise. Otherwise, large quantities of stock will be wasted. There's also the concern about safety and sanitation. Since the main raw material used for making glue is animal or fish parts, it's easy for them to get contaminated. To prevent this and other problems such as disease, vermin, and cost of transportation, glue factories are located very close to the supply of raw materials. The applications of glue have come a long way from the days of our ancestors. Experts predict that glues will replace more and more forms of fastening over the next few years, to the point that even wounds may be fastened by glue. If you like this video and want to see more like it, check out this other video.